Dear Laments crushes this weekend's YCS. Wait, there there was a YCS this weekend. Make sure you guys smash the living crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on uh, more Oz content. Isn't it great that you know you go through a YCS here just right as things are about to change? So your top 32 out of the Latin American YCS. Whether or not you give two craps about this, this is the only YCS we have on this format. Um, so I, I think it was interesting to take a look at things here. So most represented decks in top 32. We had five Labyrinth. Okay, well that's that's pretty normal, I feel like, at this point, especially when you're looking at things. Um, and then on the follow-up here, what was it? Um, we had four Rescue Ace decks and four Fire King decks. Huh, your top meta contenders here is just going to um, do its thing. Okay. We also had three Sprite. Huh, okay. Whatever Sprite variants we had out here, good stuff, I suppose. Now, we had two tier... Two Mana Diem, two Cash Tira, two Vanquish Soul. What's Vanquish Soul doing here? That's uh, that's going to be a very recurring theme for this video. Uh, we also had two Flandoris. Ooh, you know I I've, I've heard a lot of people out here looking at Flander again. Uh, probably going to change once Fire comes out, but you know that's that's fine. What is that like two weeks now? Uh, we also had one Orcus Pile, one Chimera. We had a super heavy Runic deck. What in the world is a super heavy Runic deck? I uh, using the scales to set it up, but like, doesn't that go against like the scale system for the deck? Okay, sure. We also had a Trap Tricks, an Adventure Scareclaw, and a Phantom Knight. Um, super heavy Runic. What in the world is that? I, I really wish we we have a list for that right now, but we don't. Okay. Top 16. Ho, ho, ho. What happened to our Labyrinth players? They got cratered out here. We're down to two Labyrinth decks out of that huge revolutionary pile that you saw at the beginning of this. Like, okay, Fire King takes the lead out here with having three in the top 16, which I'm not really surprised to see that. It's pretty strong. And then we have two Rescue Ace Duelist, okay. We have two Sprite, and our two Cash Tira Duelist actually advanced on in the top 16. Good stuff, man, like mid-range control is doing a fantastic job here at cleaning things up. Like, the deck the deck can lose to the high roll of the high roll, but that's fine, all right? Like, it's not really an issue. And both of our Vanquish Soul Duelists continue to hold on through top 16, which I think is pretty impressive. And our one tier Duelist still holding on as well. And then we have one Manadium and one Flunderies. Like, think about how diverse this format is as you're continuing to climb up the ladder here with the craziness that's present here because that the, the huge role of change that's going on here um, actually is pretty good. Now, all good things continue. Top eight here. We had two Fire Kings still doing their thing, and then we have two Vanquish Soul. Man, those Vanquish Soul duelists are really doing their thing. Now, you have a very strong spread of one-ups here. You had one Sprite, you have one Rescue Ace, you have one Labyrinth, and you have one tier. So even in your top half of the tournament at this point in time, the competition is still strong. Now, you shift on into top four here. Two Vanquished Soul Duelist remain on top of this. And then you have Labyrinth and then you have Tier. Give a quick uh, thanks to how crazy it is that transaction rollback, you know, if this build is playing it, has carried it this far through the grind of the meta here. Like, I think it proves, like, how much craziness that you can actually have seeing, you know, through these numbers and doing its thing. And then the grand finals are tier versus Vanquish. So I'm 
actually pretty stoked to see that one of these tier or one of the Vanquish Soul players managed to make it all the way into the finals. Now, obviously, Tier ended up winning the event, which is a little bit disappointing that you know we didn't get the chance to see the full craziness of Vanquish Soul actually overcoming this, but. So many people underestimate the craziness that is vanquished and it was able to drive so far through this tournament. Absolutely crazy to see. Now let's pass on over to what deck list we do have. Sure, uh, I'm just gonna tell you guys, make sure you smash that subscribe button, but you already know that, right? So our winning list out of this event was Raphael here with Tear. And you wanna, what's, what's changed between like every other tier list in the room and this? Well, they actually extended out the danger package, and then went triple Nessie, which is actually pretty important. And then we played one copy of Bigfoot. This actually provides you an immediate spot removal option around the way, which is um, pretty good. And then we have, of course, your standard Horus package doing its thing. And then, of course, yeah, the full tier package, so it actually does its thing. Um, I also like the fact that we have droplets in here for those board-breaking options. You know, sending something off from, you know, maybe one of the dead option piles or just getting the Shyama down in the grave just infinitely fuels the goodness of this. Um, outside of that, I mean, the fact that Super Poly got pushed down in the side deck is very, very interesting, but it does prove that, you know, this little card right here with this guy, a lot of people don't know how to handle these sorts of cards right now. We'll have to wait and see how the meta shifts up if Tier's going to continue to do its thing, but Tier taking down another YCS, good stuff, man. And then we have... Ooh, the candle. Now remember, Mr. Candle here, if this card is added to your hand except by drawing it, you can special summon this card, all right? And then once per chain, up to thrice per turn, if a monster is sent to the graveyard, except during damage step, we can increase or decrease this card's level by one. Hmm. Um, yeah, no, I just wanna point out here that this is a cute little combo. Yes, you can actually bonfire for this stupid thing at the moment, but it was a pyro tuner monster that you were able to have access to. Now remember, this deck is about to undergo change. You're about to get Pobbler and some other stuff. There was some very, very early builds in the OCG that did play around with the candle as a little additional option to add. And you know how the TCG is about their Baron to Floor, man. Like, we love this card. I also want to point out here, this build did play Infection Buzz King. This was actually kind of a nice little thing to actually see, but, you know, Fire doesn't always tend to want to go into its extra deck. You know, sometimes having, you know, the floating monsters on the field to do their job tends to be better. All right, we also have more Fire Kings. Do 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 do. Now, let's call it what it is here. There's there's not a lot of a lot of sauce in this build, you know. It, but that's fine. You're allowed to be more vanilla in terms of the deck builds than anything. I, I would say that this is probably the sauciest thing that you have here. You know, the ability to rip up an opponent's entire field through Super Poly, make a Rua slash Mud Dragon, can win you. Some pretty stupid free games. Uh, but this build does play this. And uh, I assure you that this does come up because remember Snake Eyes Ash plus the Jet Synchron suddenly is a free draw one. And uh, yeah, that, that can win you some free games. It's called what it is. Being able to make a Baron punish your opponent tends to be pretty gosh darn good at the end of the day. Um, I also see that we are doing some cross out Designator shenanigans down here too in the side deck. Uh, mainly for... Um, this card right here. Let's call it what it is. Being able to stop your opponent from, you know, hitting you in a bad position or, you know, oddly enough, hitting any of these little cards along the way in the mirror match can be pretty good. And our last list here is actually fieldspell.deck. Yes, Mana DM actually got the chance to showcase. I still think this is the highest ceiling deck that we actually have in the room right now in terms of going through these crazy combo lines and setting up. And yes, we do have a reframing down here as well. I'm glad to see the reframing in the, in the very early days when Triff was messing around with this reframing was like nowhere. They chose to do like the more board breaker centric things and then, you know, continue to play the deck through that. But um, it's not been the case as of late. I also like this one enemy controller. I like the, when you can see the little tech options kind of shine out here. I think it's very good. Also, they did play this Nightmare Unicorn. This is actually kind of cool. An immediate spot removal option for anything more problematic. Um, actually, it's kind of cool. Outside of that, 
Hmm, I actually played Chen Ying. This is actually pretty tagged out. I like this quite a lot, actually. So that is everything that we have about the remote device. Now, sorry I don't have super heavy runic for you. I, I'll be on the lookout to talk about that later in the week if it actually does come out. But right now, this is the only list that we're public. So very quick to go ahead and cover them. You guys have a good rest of your day, all right? Peace. Patrons, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.